Hey, I'm Solar and I make videos about hardstyle production while pretending this doesn't hurt my actual hardstyle production. It's been a while! <laughs> Today we're going to talk about how to pitch your hardstyle kicks. It's a topic that may sound simple but a lot of people actually still ask about this and I often do hear people messing up with this. So today I figured I want to go over it without using Nimble Kick or any other pay tools. So for this you only need FL Studio to follow along. Which is rare for tutorials nowadays. I mean, for frick's sake, I've been producing for a while now, but it still frequently happens that whenever I open a tutorial, there's at least two or three hundred dollar plugins I need for the tutorial I do not own. What's up with that? Speaking of needing things to follow tutorials along, I am going to use a kick pack I just brought out with my friend Aperol Spritz or Ap Aperol? After after all, we just made a kick pack with 195 different kicks and all the kicks are separated in like their punch and their tilt. So all in all, there's like more than 650 files. If you cannot find a kick for your song in that pack, it's a you problem at this point. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find the pack. So I also prepared a little project here. How I prepared this project can be found on my Patreon. You can watch this in a free tier, but that means you do not need to pay anything to see this. It's just that unedited videos like that will not perform well on my channel. So I'm going to look for a kick that I like and in this pack we have five different pre-pitched ones. So you don't need to pitch anything. So this whole tutorial would be obsolete. So yeah, like a modern kick right there. A very modern one like there. A calm euphoric one and a very crunchy one and i think today we're gonna stick with a very crunchy one you may have noticed all of these have like the punch and tail separate so you can mix and mangle all you want you can have uh, basically you have all the freedom to mess with these kicks until you're happy so i'm gonna use this one because i feel like the crunchy vibe will really fit the song but of course if you want there are also like a lot of euphoric kicks those are not pre-pitched, so you can do whatever the fuck you want with them. But yeah, let's for example just drag in this kick. Cool. Now before you start to add kicks to anything, make sure that your drop doesn't really have like a base layer, right? So for example here we have a base layer. We do not want that with the kick, because otherwise we have two very strong bases competing for the first place and none of them will win. There we have our kick, and in this case we know it's an f sharp because we were kind enough to label it for you. But if you do not know, what you could try is you could loop one part of the song. I'm going to send this to the mixer. And I'm going to add a G tune. This is a free plugin. Uh, you can also download it in probably other dolls than F-Studio, I hope. And... <laughs> it can kind of figure out the tone for you. However, this is not quite reliable in a lot of cases because frequencies are difficult apparently. So if this doesn't work for you, what you could also try is just listen to your kick, grab a piano and let's lower the volume for a little bit otherwise we cannot hear shit. So right now, if I would play like a G sharp, or sorry, like an F sharp on this, like an F, very different note. But this, see how these frequencies kind of mesh together, right? That's another way to figure out if you are in the right tone. Before we pitch, we need to separate. And we need to separate the punch from the tail. And you can probably see the difference, right? Like this is a very different thing than this. So this would be the punch or the tock or the whatever, right? Like this would be the strong, I'm not sure why it keeps selecting everything. It's definitely not annoying. But if FTU keeps updating this way, I'm too if that's way from becoming an Ableton user. Anywho, so this would be the punch. This would be the punch and the tail would be... We only want to pitch this part. However, if we now start turning this pitch wheel randomly, the punch also starts to pitch for some fucking reason. So to prevent this, I'm gonna click on this fallen Christmas tree icon. Sideways butt plug, I'm not sure. Make unique. And now if we pitch this... The punch stays the same. However, the keen ear among you probably have noticed that this sounded terrible. And that is because not every pitching algorithm is the same. So before we start pitching, we need to know how. And for that, by the way, let's reset the volume. So we actually have the control in the mixer. Great. 
Um, but let's lower this for a sec. More control, more happy. There are a lot of different ways to calculate how to repitch a sample. Some are optimized for like going super long, some are optimized for just being very quick and light for your PC, some are optimized to keep the character preserved while also stretching the length for example, and you need to figure out the right one to use. And in LStudio, I'll tell you the secret, it is mode E3 mono. Within this, we can pitch a lot before the tone starts fucking up. So I'm gonna turn the pitch wheel, not this one, never ever touch this pitch wheel. Also on the topic, make sure this time wheel is at zero, absolute zero, because sometimes it does this and on a very minimal scale. And holy fuck, that's annoying. This is the pitch wheel we actually start to use and it has a range knob next to it. So what that means is for example, we are on F sharp right now. If we were to need a, let's say a G sharp, we need to go up by two. So we set the range to two, it already is, right? Then we drag this wheel up all the way. Then it would be on the G sharp. You notice it's also too short now. And then with the mull in the time stretching, we can bring it back to length. I then tend to overshoot a little bit and then just trim it with this. That would be a successfully pitched hardstyle kick. To figure out what notes you actually need to use, I'm going to click on this. And this says F. So I'm going to bring it to an F. So that would mean one down. So I'm going to set the range to one. I'm going to drag the wheel down all the way. And now I just need to trim this a little bit. Make it a little bit louder. Let's duplicate the fucker. Yeah. So let's copy the punch. And from now it's mostly repeating, like not that difficult from this point. So now we need a G sharp, which was from the F to up. So we're going to make this one unique, right? So again, make unique. Then we're going to bring this up by two. So like, wow. Then we just restretch. And I think we also, yeah, that should be fine. Okay, now we need a D sharp and the baseline says it's down. From an F sharp, it would be down by one, two, three. Now I'll show you what happens when we do that. So down by three, it said, right? It works. However, it is real fucking low. Often when you hear a D sharp in, in kicks, you actually hear the opposite. So make unique, you actually hear this plus 12, right? So minus three plus 12 would be nine nicely done you deserve a sticker so we bring it up by nine and we're gonna stretch it until it fits roughly like that right honestly i do like this low 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 high that could also work real well so we could also do this the other way around like where we go like high high low low Honestly, I like this a lot. So for D sharp, we now have two notes because like the one is like a little bit too high and the other one is like a little bit too low, right? But it also makes the whole thing way more dynamic, so that's fun. And for the other one, I'm guessing it's a C sharp. It is. So let's bring this to minus two. Fuck, don't do that. So right now we're reset, make unique. See, even people like me fuck up a lot so like that maybe get the punches in there again because we do need punches and now just and that honestly is all there is to pitching hardstyle kicks and for mixing it mostly comes down to make sure that your leads are side chained i have tutorial on that which i will uh, probably put in the cards later other than that it's mostly playing with the volumes a lot of people ask, oh yeah, what are like the right dB levels or whatever compared to your leads? And the actual answer is that it depends on your style. Some artists have like a very overpowering kick. Some have a very, very much like a kick in the background. Like it really depends. It also depends on your style of kick because this is a very crunchy one. Whereas like if you were to go with like, for example, a sub -Zero project style kick, right? Um, those have a lot less high end in there. And so for that, you probably need to push it a little bit louder. Otherwise it just will not come through. So it really depends on your style. It really depends on the kick type. Um, only thing I can really say for that is just try around a lot. I often say that with mixing, 
playing with the volumes or leveling is the best way to get good. That is about it for pitching kicks. I hope this helped you. Drop in the comments what you want me to make a video about next. It was a pleasure to be your host once again. Until we meet again.